since the Empire Windrush arrived from the Caribbean, beginning a wave of mass migration that helped prepare Britain after the Second World War. Well, many people who came here stayed, worked and settled, but in recent years, thousands were wrongly classed as illegal immigrants, despite living here for decades. Kerry Swain is in Southampton, where special events have been taking place for the anniversary. Welcome to the Steamship Shield Hall, which will be playing a part in the Windrush celebrations. Details in a minute. The Windrush wasn't the first or the only ship to bring Caribbean migrants to this country. In 1947, the Almanzora, with 200 passengers from the West Indies, docked here in Southampton. Members of what's become known as the Windrush generation continued to arrive until the early 1970s. Among them, the father of Sonia Forbes, who's with us now. Sonia, tell me about your father. My mum and dad came over in 1957. They have been in Southampton all their lives. After four days of being in this country, he got a job with an oil company and he stayed there for 48 years until he retired. He also is part of the Harbour Light Steel Band, which my mum named, and that has been going for over 50 years. What do you think his generation has contributed? Apart from food, music, there are so many contributions made by so many people, but we bought life. We bought good food. We bought good music. And why is it important, do you think, that we continue celebrating Windrush Day? Because we mustn't forget how it all began. Our parents were invited here. They are all British citizens and they're invited here to help boost the economy and to build the country after the war. So we, we mustn't forget those details. And you'd like to see children talk about this? Absolutely. I do believe the only plat one of the only platforms it, we can deliver this is through the school curriculum. Sonia, thank you. Well, as Sonia said, men and women from the Caribbean were invited, encouraged to come here. Yet in recent years, shocking stories have emerged of people being detained, even deported as illegal immigrants. Derek Johnson has this report. Anthony Bryan visiting Southampton and telling his shocking story. In 2015, after 50 years in Britain, he applied for a passport, only for the Home Office to classify him as an illegal immigrant. Well, at first I thought I was, uh, they made a mistake because I've been here from I'm nine years old. And I went primary school here, I went secondary school here, I had my national insurance when I was 15, we were close to 16. So I thought it could, it, it, they made a mistake. Well, unfortunately, they came and locked me up, lost my job, couldn't go to no, no, I couldn't rent nowhere. Very sadly, Anthony Bryan's story was not unique. Hundreds like him who had moved from the Caribbean when they were very young were caught up in the government's hostile environment policy. Introduced to cut immigration numbers by making it hard for those without the correct documentation to continue living here. If you couldn't prove you are British, it was automatically assumed that you were an illegal immigrant. And lots of the Windrush generation, the children of the Windrush generation that came to Britain during the 50s, 60s and 70s, who came with their parents' passports or aunts' uncles' passports as minors, and especially those who didn't get a passport in their own right, automatically assumed to be illegal immigrants, and they weren't, because they paid the taxes, they worked hard, raised families. When news of the policy emerged, there was widespread anger. Prime Minister Theresa May offered an apology. But a compensation scheme for those affected has been criticised for being slow and complex. I could have been one of those children who were shipped back to Jamaica because I came here on my mother's passport. And because the onus was on us to try and prove that we had a right to be here, it made it really difficult for a lot of people. And of course that caused a lot of hurt um, for our community, regardless whether you're relatives or not. You know, any of us could have been in that situation. And some feel that black Britons today are still treated as second-class citizens. There's a very much a big struggle, because it, it hasn't ended. It's filtered onto this generation as well, but um, yeah, there's the sense of... It, it feels like it's fresh, it feels like it's happened now, because I'm still able to feel it. How do you feel about what you went through now? To be honest, I, it was a bit of sweet, because I felt going through that, 
they kind of test that, that love what I had feeling. They, they feel like, well, what the sorry, you know, what am I doing here? Because they don't want me here. There's some general people who feel sorry that I've gone through that. So that kind of cancelled that out a bit, you know. So I'm glad for, to have them person there around me. Derek Johnson, ITV News. A member of Anthony Bryan's family told me that eight years after police broke down his door and locked him up, he's still so traumatised he wraps thick tape around his door knocker to prevent loud knocks, which remind him of that traumatic day. With me now is Lou Taylor, director of Black History Month South. Lou, Windrush Scandler, two words that are in our conversation so often. What's your reaction to this lack of compensation being paid out? The, the situation is this, three out of four people have still not received their compensation and we're in 2023. The, uh, the, the downside of that also is that a lot of the administration that was set up to deal with that compensation has now been dismantled. So it's going to take even longer. What more can we do to honour the members of the Windrush generation? I think first and foremost, get the money paid. Let's, clear, let's get this done. Uh, a very clear apology from the, from the government would be, would be something worth doing. And, and actually for everyone to, to, cele to celebrate these things, because this generation, the, the Windrush generation, they really put a lot into the UK. The NHS, transport, all of those things were really important. We have all benefited from their efforts. Let's finish on a positive note. We're on a ship, there's a special sailing. Why a ship? Uh, so, the reason we've chosen this ship, which is the SS Shield Hall, which is based in Southampton, we've chosen water, because water is a conduit. It's a conduit between the West Indies and the UK. It's a conduit between West Africa and the, uh, and the West Indies, which is why people there in the first place. So we thought, celebrate it on water, and that's why we're, why we're, doing, why we're doing this. And you're doing what on Saturday? So on Saturday, the 24th of June, we've got a special sailing. Uh, it's a celebration. Uh, we're on board the SS Shield Hall. It's going to be going around the Solent. Uh, we've got music. We've got... Uh, Caribbean food. It's going to be absolutely really good fun. We've got a Windrush exhibition as well, so if you're not sure what the Windrush is all about, come and join us, come and see us, and you'll, 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 you'll learn something, if nothing else. Lou, thank you so much. Well, the Windrush sank in 1954 after a fire on board, but her name will live on in the West Indian men and women she brought here and their descendants. You've all contributed so much. Very swaying there on the anniversary of Windrush. So it sounds like the, the Shield Hall is going to be the place to be this yeah, weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Lovely. Well, the ITV Evening News continues here at 6.30.